Now, traffickers of illicit drugs and other harmful substances have been having a tough time since retired Brigadier General Buba Marwa took over as the chairman and CEO of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Upon his resumption of office in January this year, the E issued a stern warning to drug barons and traffickers to quit the illegal trade or spend their lives behind bars. The arrest of former Deputy Commissioner of Police Abba Kiari, as well as several major drug busts, that have been made under him is proof that uh, with the right man at the helm, the NDLEA can live up to its billing of ridding the country of illicit drugs and bringing traffickers to justice. Now let's talk about the NDLEA and its achievements so far by bringing the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency uh, spokesperson Femi Baba Femi, thank you so much for joining us on TVC Bref Breakfast. It's good to have you. Now, uh, tell us thank about you. yes, tell us about the uh, achievements the NDLEA has recorded so far because NDLEA has been in the news here and there. Oftentimes, almost every day, we tend to receive message um, uh, news from you about arrests made here and there. Talk to us about how these feats were able to be done. Yeah, um, let me start from um, January 2021. That was actually when um, General Marwa resumed as the chairmanship executive of the NDLA precisely January 18, 2021. And um, one of the first things he did, which, um, which um, have actually made the agency what it is today, first was to um, look at the structure of the agency look at the morale of the personnel and he moved in straight to take certain steps that will boost the morale and also reposition um the agency operationally and administratively now um he did set up um, a committee to look at the welfare of officers look at the issues concerning their ranks and ultimately to cut things short um that exercise led to the promotion of um over 70 percent of the workforce of the agency that was a great morale booster then two he also um got the support of uh, president muhammadu buhari who himself has been very very committed to the war against them um, drug in nigeria by virtue of um, the kind of support encouragement he's been giving to the agency and one of the things he got from the president was the um um intervention to offset a number of allowances especially um, um barrier entitlements of um officers and men i mean for the families of officers and men that lost their lives in line of duty i mean the last of such was paid in 2014 and um, that last year all of that um, were paid to 188 families um, of uh, officers that had died in the line of duty all of this also helped to boost the morale of um, the officers and men of the agency beyond that again uh certain steps were taken to um reposition the agency operationally and one of the things he did was to change the operational maxim of the agency to offensive action meaning that um the agency would not have to wait till drug traffickers are passing by their offices before they take action now they have to stay on offensive action taking the battles to the doorsteps as you, as you would have seen uh, in most of our operations now you will see the agency going straight into the i mean to the the hideouts of um, mm -hmm. traffickers and the bureaus to actually engage them and make sure that the cartels are dismantled and that um in last year alone that led to uh over i mean precisely 12,306 arrests um in that again you also have um, about 1400 um, offenders um successfully prosecuted and sent to jail serving various jail terms beyond that more than 1500 um uh cases also pending in the law courts and um Again, you also have, um, because um, the work of the agency is not just all about drug supply reduction, we also mm. have quite a number of activities in the area of drug demand reduction. And that, um, I mean, that in that area also we have um, uh, substantial results, substantial achievements in the sense that we had um, 
about 8,000 um, drug users cancelled mm -hmm. and rehabilitated right. within that same period. Beyond that, um, you have, um, again, let me quickly go back to drug supply reduction, where we see over 3.4 million kilograms of assorted illicit drugs. And that, on its own, the operations last year has affected um, the availability and access to drugs across the country. What, um, from our um, findings from the field, from um, uh, the field of operations, right. uh, w these days, what we discovered is um, because the access to these drugs had been dramatically um, affected uh, through, as a result of the, uh, the huge seizures, right. as well as the number of arrests, now the prices of some of these drugs have really gone, um, have, really, have really hit the rooftop. And uh, that on its own is a great achievement, meaning that right, Mr. the Dr. number Dr. of people that have access to... Yes, please. Right. Sorry to button. But then, you know, a lot of people will be wondering, you guys are not witch. You don't employ, you don't deploy witchcraft in order to sniff out some of these people who are carrying um, drugs here and there, you know, from one country to another. Tell us about the technology. Do you have the latest sophisticated state-of-the-art technology to be able to you know discover or uh, be able to nap those who are trafficking in drugs is it the latest technology or is it based on intelligence that you're able to discover all of this and you know nap them uh, i've been speaking with um, the spokesman national drug law enforcement agency uh, Femi, Baba Femi, he actually told us about what the uh, the current leadership of the Brigadier General. All right, I got that. I got the message that he's back, Mr. Baba Femi. I'm not sure whether you had the last question. I the last question I asked you. Uh, I, I want to know. Okay, please can you come again? Yes, I want to know because a lot of people will always imagine how you are able to arrest, make arrest of some of these drug traffickers who bring drugs from other countries or from Nigeria to other countries or from other countries to Nigeria. It's not that you deploy witchcraft to be able to, you know, um, know to, to find out that some people are actually carrying drugs. Talk, talk to us about the latest technology that you deploy, or is it based on intelligence? Yeah, one, you have just mentioned one, um, intelligence. Um, I'll tell you one significant um, paradigm shift in the operations of the H agency um, since General Mara came on board last year was um, the use of intelligence that the agency has relied on um, seriously. And beyond that, again, we also have technology, the use of technology that has really helped us. And um, I'll tell you, let me just give you a hint this morning that um, there was, I mean, a case that, is, uh, that has been of interest to the country um, since last year, and that was the importation of Captagon, what the, the, the drugs you call um, um, jihadist drugs, um, into the country through the Apapa port last year, and were able to intercept that. And uh, one of um, the suspects, a key suspect in that, um, in that case that we have been um, on his trail, I'll tell you, at the point when the fellow got tired of running, he had to submit himself after how many months. That is what technology can do. You know, when you keep tracking and following up, I'm just, um, I just cited that as an example of how significant and how useful technology can be in uh, the kind of work we're doing. Beyond technology, again, um, we also have, um, um, we have, um, we had the impact of uh, 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 sniffer dr uh, I mean, dogs have been, I mean, has been very felt effectively across all our operations um, at the seaports, at the airports, and land borders. That is also very significant. Again, beyond um, beyond all of these three that I've identified, there is also um, the support from our foreign partners. Mm -hmm. Again, that ha that is also connected to intelligence because um, you see, when you share intelligence with uh, when your foreign partners share it, believe in you, trust your capability, right. and they are f and they feel comfortable to share intelligence with you, and that has really worked seriously in support of the agency. Um, for instance, the Catagon thing that I spoke about um, that was 
basically based on um, intelligence sharing um, by our foreign partners. That particular uh, shipment was followed all the way from the Middle East. Even when um, the shipment was transloaded somewhere up Africa here, everything was monitored up to the time it got to our, I mean, our own port here. So that, um, that is very significant, right. working with uh, foreign partners. Yeah. Yeah, recently um, we saw in the news and we also got some information from the NDLEA about the arrest that was actually, you know, carried out on the Lagos Island to arrest a drug peddler. But then your officials, your men were, were met with um, some form of resistance which led to shootouts. And we got, start, we got information that about five people lost their life. Uh, talk to <laughs> us about <laughs> this particular arrest and how far have you gone? Uh, you know, about some of this, how far have we gone in prosecuting some of these people? Now, this, um, I, I keep hearing these figures that five people, ten people were killed. And up to now, we've not been able to establish only one single person killed. There have been several videos of that particular operation uh, in the public space there, and there has not been anyone where an individual was identified as killed. So I don't know why we in the media keep, I mean, ha ha I mean, um, promoting or hammering on this, uh, on this death, on this casualty of a thing. That's why you you're human here. Beings That's why you're here, so that you can set the yes. record straight. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying it because I've I've said it on a number of platforms, including on TVC. I think a few days ago, I did say it that. Um, We've not, for as far as we know, there is nobody that was killed in that incident. Eh? Because what we did simply was um, now, anybody who is familiar with Lagos Island, you will appreciate the fact that party area, um, it's a place notorious for um, drug distribution and peddling. And um, we have quite two major hubs like that in Lagos that is Akala area of Mushi and party area of Lagos Island. That is where uh, largely um, most of the drugs that go across um, parts of the across, across the state and even outside um, the state across the country, that is where they are distributed because it's, they are major hubs. And even some suspects that we have arrested at the airports did show that they, 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 they got their supply from those two major hubs. And so... Um, as a responsible agency working with the Lagos state government, because we also we also have to put it on record that um, the Lagos state government have been very supportive in the fight against illicit drugs in uh -huh. the state. Because um, with a three percent prevalence rate, nobody, no government, no serious government will allow that to be. And so the state government has been working with us. And now a step forward, we did get. Uh, information that um, some of the people behind running the cartels in that place precisely we got uh, information that three of them had stock in their warehouses and um, they were also available around the area and so we quickly moved in after surveillance and all the necessary uh, operational procedures that we needed to take right. uh, after all of that had been taken we moved in and um, we got the first um, kingpin that is um Alaja Sharifa at Lawa, and um, substantial. We also got substantial uh, quantity of um, drugs from her warehouse, along with um, some of her accomplices. I think about six of them. Mm -hmm. And moving to the next stage of the operation, obviously the other kingpins, um, seeing what had um, befallen one of them, they mo they quickly mobilized um, hoodlums and um, area boys to launch attack against our men from all directions. They were wielding all manner of um, objects, including guns, bottles, cutlasses, stones, and cordials, or what have you. They were available, and, and they were very daring. And so, in order not to escalate the situation, mm. we, since we got already got some, some, some people with um, drugs, our men um, tactically decided to take, I mean, leave the area. And as you can see, so in one of the videos, you can see them trying to retreat while shooting into the air, into safer directions to deter the hoodlums from, um, from right. uh, getting close to them. Yeah. And um, that was exactly what happened. And um, as I speak with you, I know 
uh, the those already in our custody, mm. they are facing interrogation, and um, in due time, definitely um, the matter will be in court. All right. So some of these people and some others that you arrested, including some um, some artists that were that are your custody, you paraded them recently as against the provisions of the Constitution, uh, thirty six subsection, subsection five. You know, some human rights groups actually were uh, dissatisfied with your agencies for parading some of these people, and then with the fact that. The CP Abakiari, who is also in your custody, was not among those who were paraded. Is he a secret cow? Now, um, let me start with um, the issue of parading. I'm not sure you got that right. We did not parade anybody. It's a different thing when we um, issue a statement and show evidence because. Um, Nigeria is not a place you just say ABC happened. Imagine what happened on Saturday. If we had not shown evidence of arrests and seizures made, a lot of people were going, even people in other countries, far away outside the country, they were going with fake news that, oh, NDLA had um, gone to the island to go and kill drug users, not even traffickers and what have you. And so at that point, we had to quickly respond to dispel their falsehood by showing the the decisions that were made at the at the place of the operation mm -hmm. as well as um some of the suspects with the with the drug seizures and that was exactly what happened in that case there was no incident of anybody being brought before um the press uh i mean parading them before the media nothing like that happened now coming to um a bakiari case i don't think there are two different situations in this case in one case, you had people arrested with drugs, and we have a responsibility to show because Nigerians believe in pictures, in short videos that they can see that indeed these people are not lying about what about their claims. I'm sure you are you are familiar with that. If you did, um, if you say to Nigerians that um, you arrest ABC or you you seize ABC and they don't have the pictures of what you claim to six, they will doubt you, they will actually come for you. And so that's why most times we do show some of these um, drug exhibits as mm. well as uh, just uh, pictures of, I mean, uh, pictures taken in the course of the operation. Yeah. Now, in the case of Abakiari, Abakiari, um, where the matter is already, the charges have been filed against them, so I'll be limited in what I'll, I can discuss with you. But then in his own case, they tampered with drug exhibits, which had already been, which had already been sold. And so, it, basically, there was nothing on ground to display because these exhibits had already been sold. I'm not sure. Can you get my dream? Yeah, when you say it's, it has already been sold, you, when you said it has already been, yeah. already been sold, you know, your your agency actually promised that no stone will be left unturned to ravel all Abakiari's yeah. accomplices, you know. So at what stage are yeah. you in this investigation? To whom these exhibits were after, sold, after have you been able to, 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 to arrest you, them as well? I told you that... Um, this is a very big investigation, and I can tell you that charges have been filed against those already in our custody. And I can also tell you that um, uh, substantial parts of the investigation also is still ongoing in some other areas. But as far as um, uh, as far as this uh, particular seizure uh, is concerned, charges have been filed against those um in our custody and mm -hmm. that is not to say that um uh some person or person still at large yeah uh, by the time they uh by the time they um are taken into custody that's not to say that they will still not uh, have their own day in court yeah but i think uh please let's i think we can Ab let, absolutely let, because the matter is already yeah uh, uh, it's so that it doesn't lead to subjudice uh, so but then you were given nigerians exactly. the deepest assurances that um the the matter would definitely be pursued to a logical conclusion is that what you're trying to say 
I'm saying that the matter is already before the court. Charges <laughs> have been filed already. So it's just, it's just a matter okay, of let's change, let, let's let's change court tag. Say, okay, bring them. Let's change tag. Yeah. A little earlier, you said that um, some of these people you um, you you try to uh, is one thing for for you to arrest drug peddlers is another thing for you to get them into your custody and another thing again to make sure that they are rehabilitated. They are you know this consciousness yeah. is being you know taken into them so that they don't go back to this crime again. And the young the young yeah. younger generations that are coming up, we see that there is this proliferation of drug, you know, abusing of drug among them. So what is your agency doing, apart from arrest, uh, making arrests, prosecuting offenders, what does your agency do in creating awareness among these youth so that they don't go into drug, you know, abuse? Uh, quite, a, not quite, a lot of, um, quite a lot of steps have been taken in that direction. Um, and uh, a, a major fit in that uh, in this regard actually started on june 26 last year when president Bu i mean Buari actually launched the war against drug abuse mm. which is wada and the whole essence of that is to mobilize the citizenry to buy in and take ownership of the war mm. so that all of us can have this talk about it and do all we can to make sure that um, uh, that um, we don't have um, a drug culture in our country. And then, um, since then, these messages have been going around, advocacy visits uh, to mobilize faith-based organizations, uh, community-based organizations, civil society organizations, NGOs, everywhere. You would have seen, but it's just that, um, not all of these are being reported by the media, mm -hmm. but then we are everywhere. I can tell you, uh, we're probably doing much more in the area of drug demand reduction, which is this advocacy, treatment, counseling, and what and all related um, uh, activities, even more than the, the drug supply yeah. reduction, where you see the arrest, the seizures, and the prosecution. That I can tell you because, like I told you, I told you, um, even last year alone, we had. Um, about 8,000 persons cancelled. Yes, and yeah, because of our time, that is huge. Be, yeah. be, because of our time, okay. I just want you to, you know, that as we call this, um, bring this interview to a close, just a few minutes. Um, we know that you, you're actually, you know, recording lots and lots of, making lots and lots of positive records. But no doubt, there might be challenges. What are these challenges and what are some of the things that you like the government to probably do for your agency to enhance your operations? Well, basically, we we cannot say the NDLA as of today cannot say it's um, it's not grateful to the powers that be uh, that the, at the executive level, at the legislative level, the National Assembly. They've all been supportive, and there, but then it can never be enough. So we need to do more because of um, of the enormity of the problem we are we are we are, we are facing, we are tackling, and so. When it comes to logistics, we are always um, we are always asking for more, and that is why we always appeal to state governors to um, to key in into this area so as to support the operations of the agency in their various states because it's all about their uh, it's all about the safety and the law and order in our various states in our various communities. Yeah. So all of us is something all of us uh, need to do, and beyond that, um, the agency um, has been. Um, Principally, we need the people themselves, mm -hmm. Nigerians, to come on board and take ownership of this war. Mm -hmm. That way, uh, everybody will know that, okay, like it's now it's something that is in national consciousness. But then we need this to trickle down to the communities so that community leaders and traditional rulers that we right. have been appealing to, they can set up uh, WADA committees right. at various levels to support the work of the agency. All right. Um, thank you very, very kindly. The spokesperson, uh, spokesman, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Femi, Baba Femi, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Good morning.